Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, uh, this video took a little bit longer than I'd planned on because, uh, well, I went, kind of went down a rabbit hole on antennas. But I said uh, in the last video that I was going to show you my setup for receiving NOAA weather satellites with my local radios. You know, I, I showed you how you could do it with web SDRs if you didn't have any radio gear. Um, but you can also do it, uh, obviously, with your own setup. Um, you don't really have to build any specific or crazy antennas. So they can help. And that's kind of where I went down a bit of a rabbit hole. I built one of the recommended antennas, and we will talk about that in a moment. And we'll also compare it to what I usually use. So, um, let's, uh, let's go look at what I have been receiving the satellites with. And I'll show you a full reception pass, so you can see... You know, how the signal comes up, what it looks like, what it sounds like. Um, and then I'll show you the antenna that I built, which is one of the recommended antennas for receiving satellites, and uh, a comparative pass with it, and we'll talk about that. Before we get to the pass, uh, recording the satellites, let's look at the equipment that I'm using and some notes about the place that I'm at. First off, my location, as it says here, is ideal for receiving satellites. I'm outside of Kingman, Arizona, which is way up above sea level, quite high. As you can see, 3,500 feet or around 1,066 meters above sea level. Uh, there are no obstructions here. Um, if we look at a 360 degree panorama out to the horizon, you can see that off in the distance there are mountains. Usually they uh, are maybe up as much as 10 degrees off the horizon, a little bit more in some cases. But overall, except for very few directions, I have a big wide open sky. Uh, thirdly, weather. Uh, it, it, most of the days here out in the desert are clear and sunny without clouds or other uh, atmospheric obstructions to cause problems with the signals. So I'm in an ideal location. I get really, really good reception as you'll see when we get to the passes. Uh, the equipment that I use. My receiver that I like to use is an AirSpy HF Plus Discovery. It's a great little software-defined radio. Uh, the software that runs it is free and uh, it's very sensitive it works fine um, for vlf all the way up through uh, vhf however um, you don't have to spend a lot of money this was over a hundred dollars i think so i remember it was a while ago but you can get away with something much cheaper uh, for example this these little rtl sdr dongles uh, are available for under thirty dollars on amazon and they would work fine for the vhf range they don't do very well um, down in the HF range. I think you can modify them if I remember right, but um, they would be fine for receiving the satellites. So you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a receiver to do this. Software, I uh, use GQRX for the uh, receiving software. It allows me to record the audio signal. We'll see that in action. And I'm using NOAA-APT for decoding the satellite images. It's a newer program that's in active development. And we'll also see that in the demonstration. Antennas. Usually I use my Slim Jim. Um, it's cut for two meters, but it's, you know, it's in the VHF range. It's close enough in frequency that it does quite well on receiving the satellites. Vertical antennas tend to have a null directly above them. And uh, actually we'll see in, in, the, in the demo that um, that null on the Slim Jim is not very pronounced. So we'll talk about that later. Uh, for this video, I did build a recommended antenna for satellites. This is a horizontal V dipole. Uh, these are supposed to be oriented horizontally. As you can see, this is a top-down view, and the wide angle would be pointed to the south, the narrow to the north. I don't know if that matters that much, but most of the time the satellites are coming from a northward to a southward direction as they uh, pass by. So I built one of these. Um, I'll show you a picture of it here. I, I just threw it together with some PVC. It's a real simple antenna. And uh, we'll go and we'll try this antenna out and look at a satellite pass. Let's go. All right, I've got the V dipole up. And in 23 seconds, NOAA 18 will come over the horizon. And if we look at its pass, We can see that it's going to go almost overhead, so this is just about perfect. Okay, NOAA 18, 
So let's go over here to GQRX and get it going. Nine, one, two, five. I've got it squelched presently, but oh, look at that. We're starting to see it already. There it is. It just came over. All right, I'm gonna turn the gain down on this so it's not blasting us. And we'll go ahead and open the squelch up. And I'll start recording. I really like GQRX. It's simple, but it provides all the tools and utilities I think you'd need for most shortwave receiving or radio receiving, radio stuff, without overloading you with options, you know? Okay, we got a good signal right off the bat. The uh, satellite is currently 16 degrees above the horizon to the north. So it's just come over the uh, top of the hills over there. I should have a nice clear uh, line of sight through the whole pass. Let's see how it goes. Getting a few little fades there. There's literally nothing between me and the satellite but atmosphere right now. Um, there's no obstructions in the sky. Clear line of sight. Decent signal. Negative 73 dBFS. I do wish GQRX had a way to change this meter to an S meter. Being a long time ham, I've got S meters ingrained into my brain. I, I can look at a signal on an S meter and get a, a good impression of how strong it is. So far pretty good. No real fading going on. I'd be most curious to see what it does when it's almost directly overhead. NOAA-18's altitude, by the way, 539 miles above. So when it's overhead, it'll be exactly 539 miles away. Does that count as DX for VHF? I can see the center frequency is shifting slowly down. I'm going to get ahead of it. Now the nice thing with GQRX is I just changed my frequency and you didn't hear any interruption in the audio at all. Okay, we're pretty close to almost as straight overhead as it's going to be. Negative 75, negative 73. Signal goes up and down a little. Now we're coming towards the end of it. 15 degrees elevation. Fourteen point seven, fourteen point six. Just about to go down below the mountains to the south. Twelve degrees. I'm probably going to lose it around four or five degrees. Oh, slightly west of south, that's shooting right down the valley, so the mountains aren't in the way. We might get it all the way down. Three degrees, still got a decent signal. Wow. It's only two degrees off the horizon, it's starting to fade.
Yep, here we go. Okay. Good enough. Let's go look at the image. Let me go load the file we just recorded. Okay, I've got my GQRX recording file loaded here. I'll hit decode. All right, it's decoded. Let's go process it. And there it is. Now, to get some orientation, put the map overlay on it. Okay, I need to rotate it. There we go. There's the US. And I would be right around here. Wait, no, right around here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm right here. Oh, so we got some haze off the coast, but not too many clouds here. Let's go back to the wide view. Now we can really see. That's a pretty good decode. As you can see, we had just a few little fades here, a little bit of noise band. But overall, we got a pretty darn clean image um, off of this one. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, I was in the middle of editing the video and I noticed that there was going to be a much better pass. Almost as good as the uh, one on the V-Dipole, actually about the same. And I thought, perfect for comparison, uh, I should record this one for the Slim Jim. So in 43 seconds, NOAA 18's coming up. This is the polar plot, and as you can see, it's going to go almost directly overhead. It's going to get to 87 degrees, which is pretty close to right overhead. And I am hooked up now to the Slim Jim, cut for two meters, as you can see here. So this is the antenna I'm going to be using for this, uh, for this pass. And it's going to be coming over the horizon in 18 seconds. So remember, we're on the Slim Jim. This is a vertically oriented antenna that should have a null directly uh, overhead. And that's what I'm interested in finding out. So let's get the receiver going here. I'm using the Air Spy. Let me drop that volume down so we don't blast you. There we go. And I can start to see it in the waterfall. See that? So I'm going to shift my frequency to more central. And let's listen. As soon as that clears up, I'll start recording. There we go. I think about there. Okay, we're recording. Drop that down so we're not getting blasted here. And we're 3.6 degrees above the horizon, 3.8. Usually around 4 degrees is where it goes full quieting. There's 4 degrees. It should be just coming above the hills, the mountains now. Five point eight degrees. Yep. And that's pretty close to full quieting. Just a little fade there. Ooh, there's a good strong fade right there. And another. But what I'm most curious about is when that sucker gets right around the here, directly overhead. You can see the fades in the waterfall, you see that? So you can keep an eye on the waterfall when I go to fast forward here. So you can see if it's how, you know, how often it's fading. And those will translate to noise bands 
uh, in the image when we decode the image. So let's sit back and uh, wait for this bird to get directly overhead. Okay, we're getting close. Keep an eye on the signal here. Negative 73 dBFS, so watch this. I know we got down to about negative 68, I think, if I remember right, on the uh, V dipole. And we are now entering where it should be a null on the Slim Jim. Let's see, we're presently uh, 64 degrees, uh, 66 degrees, rising fast. Watch when it gets right around the top here. It should be entering a null. Yep, the signal is dropping. Negative 77, negative 80, there it is. Almost directly overhead. There's our null right there. It's not terrible. Look at that. That's a very narrow null. And we're coming right back up. So, just right here in this little area, a very narrow null right at the very top. And to be honest, as rare as it is to have a pass that goes directly overhead like that, that's almost a non-issue for me. I can just leave the Slim Jim up and use it when I want to copy the satellites because it's not very often that a bird is going to go right directly over the top and that's a really narrow null off the Slim Jim. So that's kind of impressive for me on the Slim Jim. It's cut for two meters. It's not even cut for the right frequency, it's, but it's close. And we're getting uh, what I would call perfectly fine performance out of it for receiving the sats. Let's see how many fades we get on the rest of the pass. Okay, we're coming up on the end of the pass now. It's 9 degrees off the horizon, 8.9, 8.8, 8.7, so it's descending to the south. We're still getting quite a good signal from it, negative 72 dBFS. It's, you know, it's hovered around there at the best, so... I don't have any mountains in the direction that it's heading, so it's going right down to the horizon. We should see a loss of signal right when this predicts it, which it's see, predicting it in 1 minute and 44 seconds. It's now at 7 degrees, 6.8. 6.7, about to dip below the horizon. We're still at negative 73 dBFS on the received signal, so it's still a good solid signal. I'm really impressed with the Slim Jim, being that it's not cut for that frequency, how well it's doing. Just that teeny little bitty null right at the very top of it. That's, I thought it would be broader than that. So this is an interesting test in and of itself. 4.8, 4.6, Usually somewhere below 4 degrees is where I'll lose it. 4.1. That's starting to go. 4. Three point 3.4. Wow, we're getting all the way down to 3 degrees. And we're pretty much gone. Okay. All right, we'll stop recording. So that's a pretty complete pass. Let's uh, launch NOAA-APT. 
And let's decode this image. I'm going to go find the file. Okay, I've selected our file that GQRX recorded here. We'll hit decode. All right, and let's go over here and process it. And there it is. What did I change here? I don't remember changing anything right there. Well, anyway, there is our fade when it was directly overhead, directly above the Slim Jim. Let's get this thing oriented so we can tell what we're looking at here. And let's put a map over it. There we go. There's the US. And I'm right about here, and you can see <laughs> that fade was when it was directly overhead. In fact, let's uh, zoom in on that. So there's Arizona. I'm about here. But that fade should, be, yeah, that should be when it was directly overhead. That's interesting. I, uh, maybe I'm about there on the map. Anyway. There's our fade from the very top of the Slim Jim. And as I said, most passes are not going to um, be directly overhead. You know, the satellite's going to be coming down off to the side a little bit. So I think I'm fine with using the Slim Jim when I want to record the satellites. And uh, any satellite pass that's not going to be, you know, more than maybe 82 or 83 degrees elevation, I should get a good clean signal the whole way. So there you go. Not bad at all. Um, not quite as clean as the V-dipole, but just a few fades there at the beginning of the pass, almost none till right at the end. Definitely uh, the Slim Jim is a usable antenna for satellite reception, provided the pass doesn't go directly overhead. All right, that was interesting. So there you go. That's how I receive the weather sats. And you can see that uh, I get really, really excellent results here. I'm sure that it has something to do with the big sky and the altitude that I'm at, the elevation. Um, I'll, actually, I'll, I'll be uh, checking that out or testing that when I get closer to sea level, when I go down to Yuma this winter, uh, which is only a few hundred feet above sea level. And we'll see if the atmosphere is really making that much of a difference. So um, I hope you found that interesting. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.